Hey guys, today I'm spilling my secrets for mastering the keyframe editor in Apple Motion. If you're a Final Cut Pro editor, you probably know that editing keyframes in Final Cut isn't really the best, but you may not know that you have so much more control in Apple Motion so you can really create those signature looks that are super popular today. I'm gonna show you how to create these looks and I'm gonna give you 10 essential tips for using the keyframe editor along the way. Now, this is not a beginner tutorial on the concept of keyframing. If you don't know what keyframe is, I'm going to recommend you watch this video, which I will link to down in the description. It explains everything about keyframing, but if you're past that point, you're in the right place. Now, if you want to know more about keyframing in motion, but you're not really a strong motion user yet, let me recommend my course motion launchpad. It is a really robust introduction into Apple Motion so that this tutorial you're watching now and every other tutorial you watch here on YouTube will make a lot more sense. You can get Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. All right, let's dive right in. Okay, here are my project settings. This is just a demo project, so these settings are not really that important if you're following along. And the first thing I need to do is just add some content to my canvas here so we have something to work with. So I'm just going to add some text. And now once I've got that added, I wanna make sure I'm set up down here in my timeline area. So the first thing I wanna do is open the keyframe editor, which you can open by hitting this icon here. And I also wanna make sure that I have this button highlighted. This is going to show me keyframes in my regular video timeline, which I also like to see when I'm working in the keyframe editor. I'm also going to expand this window a little bit so we can get a closer look at what's going on in this keyframe editor once we add our keyframes and there's something to see here. Okay, so what I would like to do is get this text to shoot across the screen from the left side to the right side. So I'm gonna keep my playhead to the beginning of my timeline and on the position line, I'm going to make a keyframe and I'm going to make the X value a value of negative 915. Then I'm going to jump two seconds in my timeline and I'm going to change that value to positive 915, which automatically makes another keyframe. So you'll see in my video timeline, I've got these red keyframes here and in the keyframe editor, I've got these green keyframes here. Now my first tip for you is to make sure you're on the right view in your panel here in the keyframe editor. I'm on animated, so you can see I'm only seeing those X position keyframes that I modify. But if you're seeing more stuff in here, you don't want to see that. It's just going to be in your way. Let's say, for instance, you're on all. You're going to see all of these lines, all of these values. You don't need to look at these. You just want to be on animated, and that way you're only looking at the lines that pertain to the work you're doing in the moment. Now, let me explain to you how to read the graph in your keyframe editor. You can see between my two keyframes here, there's a diagonal line that is perfectly straight. And you'll see, obviously, that one keyframe is above the other. When you're working in the keyframe editor in motion, I wouldn't get tripped up on like, okay, this keyframe is higher than this one or lower than that one. None of that really matters. What you really need to be focusing on is what the line looks like between them. This line represents the speed and the change of value between your two keyframe points. So to demonstrate, you can see this is a perfectly straight line, which means that the speed is constant. And if I play this back, you can see that my text is moving across the screen at an even rate throughout the entire duration of the animation. But what if we wanted something a little bit more modern than this very linear move? Hover your cursor over one of your keyframes and right click. Under interpolation, let's switch to continuous. And now that line has a curvature. You'll see that at the very beginning of this shape, the line kind of starts out pretty flat and then it inclines at a steeper pace before flattening out again here right before the second keyframe. So what that looks like in terms of motion is that we're getting some easing. It's starting out kind of slow, accelerating, and then decelerating as if you were driving a car and you're approaching a red light. In general, this look is preferable to a linear move. But what if you wanted something different from this? Let's right click again on that keyframe. Under interpolation, let's head down to Bezier. And you'll see that I now have this handle connected to my keyframe where I can really bend the line whichever way I want by clicking and dragging it around in my keyframe editor. And we can do the same if we click the first keyframe. Again, now we have that handle and we can click it and drag it around. So now we have a custom curve. So let me show you a specific curve that's really popular in motion graphics today, which is an exaggerated S-curve. 
So what you're going to want to do is take the handle of your first keyframe and drag it to be in line with your second keyframe. And if you want to make sure that that line is perfectly straight and horizontal, here's my next tip for you, which is to hold down the shift key to make sure it's snapped into place perfectly horizontal. Now we're going to select the second keyframe, grab that handle, and we're going to extend it back to be in line with our first keyframe. And again, to make sure it's perfectly straight, hold down that shift key and you'll see it snaps right into center position. And so this is the effect you get. If you look at this exaggerated S curve, you'll see that at the start and ends of the animation, it's a very subtle change in value, but in the center, it's a very sharp incline. That's how you get that look. Let me show you some other popular looks you might recognize. I'm going to click on that first keyframe again to bring back that handle. And this time I'm going to shoot it straight up so I get this type of curve. Now it won't let me go past that first keyframe. So I don't have to hold down any modifier keys to make sure I'm perfectly vertical. And so of course we're getting a huge acceleration at the beginning and then we're really easing out. And another really common look is the opposite. I'm gonna take the handle from the first keyframe and bring it back in line with the second. And then I'm going to click on the second keyframe to reveal the handle and I'm going to make this vertical. And so now it's really moving slow and then shooting. Let's bring these moves back to that linear interpolation we initially had. So I'm just gonna right click on the keyframe and switch it back to linear because I wanna show you my next tip, which is that you don't actually have to right click on a keyframe and change the interpolation to Bezier to create those curves. You can actually just hold down the command key, click on a keyframe and drag while holding down the command key to create those curves. And once you've got the curve, you can release the command key and then just switch to shift if you want it to be straight. And once you've done it on one keyframe, all of them will have the handles. Now let's add another keyframe further down in our timeline by queuing up our playhead to the end and drawing our attention to the inspector. But now that we're looking at the inspector again, you can see that suddenly the value at my last keyframe is 904. Remember, I set it to a positive 915. Here's my next tip for you. Sometimes when you're playing with the curves in the keyframe editor, you might accidentally modify the desired value of your keyframe. So my tip is to make a note to yourself about what you wanted that value to be. And so if things get messed up, it's okay because you can just queue up your playhead to the point of the keyframe in your timeline and then type in that desired value again. And it doesn't change the shape of your curve, it just brings everything back to that final position that you had wanted. So now that we fixed that value, I'm gonna travel further down in my timeline and I'm going to add another keyframe only on the X position. So in this case, I'm gonna twirl down in the inspector and add another keyframe here. Now, when I select the center keyframe, I now have two handles on the center keyframe, one on the right and one on the left. And when I move one handle, the other one spins to align with it. Here is my next tip. You probably don't want your handles locked together in this way. Right click on one of them and select break tangent. And now you can move them independently from one another to create your looks. Now, as I'm getting more and more wonky here, you can see that sometimes my curves don't fit inside my window anymore. We can snap them to fit inside your keyframe editor by clicking this button here. What this has done is it's zoomed in on my timeline to the space between my first keyframe and the last one. And if my curves are too tall, I can just hit this magnifying glass and it'll auto scale my keyframe editor vertically to fit the curves. So everything's always in view. I'm gonna get rid of this new keyframe by selecting it and right clicking and deleting it. And I'm gonna bring that animation back to that decelerated look that we like so much. You'll notice that even though the speed at which the text is traveling is varied, it's always going straight from left to right. What if we wanted to add a little bit of a slingshot effect at the beginning of our animation? So it backed up a little to the left before shooting to the right. This is my next tip, which is to tweak your curves to add some real life physics to your animations. So to achieve this, I'm going to select that first keyframe and I'm going to drag that handle down and to the right so that the dip dips beneath my initial keyframe. So what you can see is happening here is it's backing up to the left 
and shooting to the right. All right, let's make this animation a little bit more complex by adding more keyframes, this time to the Y values. So I'm gonna cue my playhead to the beginning of my timeline and change the Y value to positive 915, jump to the next keyframe, and I'm going to make this a value of a negative 915. And now down in my keyframe editor, you can see I have two sets of keyframes. So the green line is my X keyframes, and the purple line represents my Y animation. So this is where we are right now. Let's make some changes to just the Y keyframes. So I wanna hide this green line here in my keyframe editor. So I'm gonna uncheck this box next to transform position X in my panel. And now I'm just left with that purple line. And that doesn't mean the animation's disabled for X. It just means I'm not looking at it in the keyframe editor. So let's give this purple line our exaggerated S curve like we did before. And let's bring back our X position. I'm gonna get rid of our little slingshot that we did there. So this is what this very specific combination of shapes in our keyframe editor looks like. It's a very unusual look. You probably wouldn't see this a lot. So what if you wanted to make these curves the exact same shape as each other in the keyframe editor? Here's my next tip for making sure that two different animated parameters are moving completely in sync. What I'm going to do is marquee select the first two keyframes on both values. And you can see my handles here for both of these animations. The first handle is right here. And the second one is way over here. How do I bring these in alignment? I'm going to hold down the shift key while I click and drag just one of them. And now they are both moving in unison. I can release the shift key and they still stay locked together. So I'm going to bring them both all the way to the end of the animation. Now let's select the next two keyframes. Again, I'm gonna hit shift and bring those locked together. And now this is the look that I get. So we know how to bring those keyframes into perfect alignment, but what if we wanted to add this exact same motion to a totally different object in our project? So let's say I wanted to have a back plate underneath this text. I'm gonna draw in a little rectangle to go behind my text. Now, if I always wanted this shape to move perfectly in sync with my text, I would probably just grab the rectangle, head on up to behaviors and add the align to behavior and work with that. But what if you wanted the motion to be identical, but the timing to be different. The align to behavior won't allow you to do that. You need to do it with keyframes. This is my next tip, which is how to copy and paste keyframes from one object to another. I'm going to marquee select all of them and hit command C to copy them. Then I'm going to queue up my playhead in my timeline where I want the motion to start, select the rectangle in my project pane and hit paste. And so now the motion is identical, but the timing is offset. And what if you wanted to adjust this timing this is my last tip for you. I would not recommend trying to move your keyframes around in your keyframe editor. Remember, that's how we got all of our values to be a little wonky. The safest way to do this is by closing the keyframe editor and drawing your attention to the red keyframes in your video editor. And then you can just reposition these keyframes in your video editor so you're not changing the values, you're just changing the time. There's so much more to know about the keyframe editor in Apple Motion. If you would like to see a part two to this video where I get even more into the weeds, let me know down in the description. And if you're interested in knowing more about Apple Motion, check out Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. You guys, thanks for hanging out.